All right, today is the day, and this will be the very first video in the Leviathan actual build. We did have, of course, a introduction video, but this is probably the number one where we are actually getting into working on the project. And in this one, we're gonna take a look at building a clay model. I kind of work on a clay model for a car in the way that a sculpture might work, which might be a little bit different than the way you might be trained in the design world in doing automotive clay modeling. But we're gonna take a look at that today and see how I did it. And maybe you could use that in your techniques as well if you ever want to move into this kind of thing and doing some design in clay. Of course, we've talked in the past on the Arate project, my theory about uh, 3D modeling versus actually working in a clay model or the plaster in the full size, building a full size plug and the ability to be able to have a little tactile feel and the ability to just step back and look around, see what it's gonna look like. Of course, in the clay, you're looking at it in scale, so it is not the same as working in a full-size model. But of course, when we're talking a vehicle this big, this would be a tremendous project to work into clay in the full-size model. Um, anyway, like I said, we're gonna go look at that today. So let's just take off and go take a look. However you decide to create your original concept, whether renderings or sketches, it all comes down to needing some dimensions to go to the clay model. Now to get these dimensions, I have original full scale drawings, but I needed to convert those to a smaller scale. And that scale is based off of these tires. I just got this offline as an RC car and based my scale off those. Those tires going to be 40 inches in the real world. So find what the scale is on the small tire and take it up. Now this scale converts with those tire size to be about two and a half feet long. So instead of using that much clay, which would probably weigh about 120 pounds, I'm going to uh, fill the center of it with an armature or a bunch of foam cut into the basic shape of the vehicle. So cut, all I had instead of a solid block of foam was these sheets of styrofoam and I'm just going to glue them together with some uh, spray adhesive. And usually that spray adhesive has some uh, solvents in it that attacks this foam but it'll glue it together fast enough at the time the solvent set that it will eat too much of the foam away and we are not too worried about how this looks like i said it is just to occupy a bunch of space out of the center so we don't have to use so much clay once we got our block fairly close to the size we want we're just going to trim it down to the shape or to the shape minus about an inch an inch or inch and a half, depending on how close you can get your foam. And you'll see later on here that uh, we end up having to cut some of the foam out through the clay in the end. So use the oscillating tool, cut some wheel wells, uh, trim some lines off. And once we got this thing pretty darn close, knock off that terrible uh, static dust. And I'm gonna take a heat gun as well and just go over it, kind of seal up the surface, get rid of all the small particles that are gonna end up in the clay and cause havoc with the tools. Now to hold this whole thing while we're working on it, we're going to build a, a platform or what they might call in the automotive design world, a skateboard. And this is also built to scale the thickness of it being the clearance under the vehicle. So we can just use that as a measurement of our scale as well. So once our uh, skateboard is finished, we can put some big long screws to hold the skateboard to the foam, put the base on the skateboard again, and this thing's ready to start adding some clay to it. Now I use a, a fairly soft clay that they might consider in the automotive design world, but I do some other sculpting in the more artistic side. And so I have a lot of this clay, you know, work with it and I'm very familiar with it. But even then, whether you're using the harder Chavant design clay that they use in the automotive world or this uh, J.F. McCoffin sculpting clay, it helps a lot to uh, throw it in the oven and get it nice and warm and be able to just put this foundation layer on by troweling it on. So once you pull out of the oven, about 180 degrees, so you don't want to be using your hands, so I just use a tool to, like I said, trowel it on, get that foundation layer on. Now you don't have to quite heat it that hot. Of course, when you want to start using your hands, you can put it in a lower temperature and let it sit longer to uh, saturate some more heat through it and get it to it 
temperature and a consistency that you could just uh, roll it in your hands and uh, press it into place. And of course, by putting it on with your hands, it's still kind of rough. So you need to take a tool and as you're working, scrape it down. This will allow you to see low spots. And we're not actually trying to get to our final dimensions here. We want to keep leaving some material in place so that when we finally get down to put the detail in, we have some clay to remove. So we don't have to as often add material. But that's the beauty of this oil glaze is you can add and subtract at will. And now the final thing to start doing to get closer to our form is to uh, smooth it out. And I use a fairly large flat bladed uh, sculpting tool. And these tools you can get from Sculpting Supply. They're made out of kind of a piece of flat metal pounded out, sharpened to an edge, and then put into a handle. This larger one works great for here because this old vehicle has large flat surfaces and so that tool was able to smooth about to get us close. And here we're working on adding some to what we get to call the mohawk. Or my friend Craig has told me that this is called a clear story in the train world. He being a train buff had the answers for that one. So we'll call it a, the clear story rather than a mohawk since uh, that thing. Another great tool is just a butter knife. Go to the thrift store, get yourself an old butter knife. And you can see we uh, cut through to the foam here. And so we had to use that to just gouge out the foam, fill it back in. And we just keep going. You'll find again later on, we'd have to do that once again, take some foam out of the way. Now from here on out, as we're getting closer to the level in the scale we want, we're starting to add some detail. And you can start doing this the same thing if you can collect a assortment of different sculpting tools. Pieces of flat steel sharpened work well, or sculpting tools, which are wood handles with wires or flat pieces of steel pounded out and bent into a shape. And there, of course, is lots of different sizes. Here you got the biggest one here is a flat edge piece of steel. The other is with wire tips. And you'll see how that smaller tool, that wire tip, I'll show you that in a little bit in the future, and how accurate you can get small details with that. So like I said, this thing is mostly flat faceted surfaces and so we can use just a straight edge to uh, get most of our lines and our knife to cut deeper shapes and our sculpting tools to uh, smooth out or uh, cut edges. Knife also works if you need to take off material fast. But to give this car a little more interest and uh, excitement in the design side, we are going to add some more shape here in the doors. Get a little more organic this way. These doors will be built out of uh, fiberglass and vacuum formed polycarbonate. So some people have worried about the, this not being glass or the glass sticking out there and being in the way of like tree branches and stuff, whereas polycarbonate is pretty much indestructible. And so there won't be any worry about it breaking, scratching, we'll have to come up with a, a way to prevent that if we find that that is a problem. Anyway, like I said, uh, this is gonna add some organic shapes, some good curves to uh, create some visual interest in the whole project. And one of the reasons for doing the windows this way as well is that the driver or passengers can lean out that window and look straight down at the ground. Now here's that fine wire, that tool. And you're gonna be able to see how I can take it here and uh, go into a very fine cut and take out just a small amount of materials Especially if you get a straight edge, you want a nice straight line with that. Put it down, run your tool along that. Get a straight line and remove just a small amount of materials. Same thing here, use the straight edge to set up a line and sculpt. 
Now this is a this bump here might seem kind of peculiar, but it is actually a seal for when the side panels for expanding the living space open up. That little bump will um, seal against a rubber seal for weather when it is open and when it is closed. Now we're working down on what will be known as the flotation tanks. These will be a couple of uh, aluminum storage tanks that you can keep equipment in or they will also be doubling in amphibious mode as flotation and they will extend out about 40 inches and they will also have some legs on the side so when you park and expand your living area and the sides fold out the floor will fold out and land on top of that flotation tank that's extended out to 40 inches to add a bunch of stability for living we're going to get them nice and smoothed up And then I'm going to take a nice uh, detail tool and uh, kind of show just a representation of the little extension legs. Once that flotation tank extends out, those little legs will come down to the ground. Like I said, add stability for the floor when it is uh, in camping mode. Expanded. Like we're not going to too much detail as you might in a clay model that you're going to put actually a colored finish on for a presentation. This is more to just test some design features. And here's what it looked like after the first round of uh, clay work. Like I said, still kind of rough, but like I said, we're just chasing for design features rather than for a presentation model. So after taking a look at it, we decided to make a few changes. And of course that incorporates, I lobbed off about a foot of the nose scooting the cabin back a little bit and that we had to of course dig some more foam out because the foam was in the way but that's easy enough just gouge it out and fill the hole with some clay and start working you'll see some of the design features that have already changed the clear story the mohawk on top i've extended that across the cab and onto the windshield so the little bit of a there was before a little bit of a plane that stuck out for the windshield wiper to sit on above the windshield, but now it'll be covered by the clear story as it comes up there. I've also arched the roof and the clear story a little bit more, give it a little more aerodynamics, a little more height for walking through. And you can see how the clear story would work. It actually keeps the profile a little bit lower so that when you have to work on the sides, you have a little bit lower head clearance, but when you're walking through the clear story, you've got an extra 11 inches so that anybody that wants to go in there that's uh, over six foot tall doesn't have to hunch over at all. And why we're working this also, you can see we've simplified the doors themselves. I've taken out the, the two piece glass and now it's just going to be one piece. And we are also, as you see here, working on uh, the front chin or the hull. This is a amphibious, so that front needs to be created in a way so that it deflects water, pushes it to the side so that we don't have to uh, be trudging through the water. And we can, like I said, push it to the side and have a little more uh, hydrodynamics going on in our favor. Anyway. Rebuilding that nose, getting it fixed up. And this is, of course, will probably not be the last changes. More changes will come as we have to try to fix things for manufacturability and, uh, of course, always some style. But that is our clay model of the Leviathan. That has got us to the point of having a clay model, and we are using that to push forward on our design. Now, we are using this whole process to go in kind of a reverse We'll be taking the design or the things we've changed in our original drawings as we took it into the clay, made some adaptations in the clay to kind of uh, tighten things up and do some things. Now there will be changes I'm sure that will come along because of design and assembly procedures that we've got to plan and build around. And we'll be doing that in the 3D modeling world. We have acquired a seat of SolidWorks and we'll be doing most of our modeling in there likely also Rhino and use the two of those to take it to the CAD CAM process of building some of these parts with CNC. Anyway, we are glad you stopped by. Hope you enjoy this new project.
working on this uh, off-road RV. Since we have a supercar, maybe we will call this a super van. Anyway, here with the Leviathan Project, where thank you, stop by to see our work today. Come back and see us again.